Newport News in Review starts right now. I'm Aaron Pritchett and welcome to this edition of Newport News in Review for the month of July 2010. Jump up and celebrate the red, white and blue as we focus in on fireworks fun and more importantly the many freedoms that we as Americans enjoy all across this great land from sea to shining sea. And speaking of the sea and more along the lines of water, there's nothing better than making a splash and cooling things down a bit in the midst of the sputtering summertime heat especially with one city department that's actually in the business of fighting fire with plenty of water and saving lives, whether on land and, believe it or not, right here on the water, as we focus in on the Newport News Fire Department's Marine Incident Response Team and take you aboard Fireboat One right here on the beautiful James River. You drive by them each and every day. They're located all across this city, simple buildings housing the most state-of-the-art equipment around just waiting for the call that will have some of the bravest men and women springing into action as they focus on utilizing their training and their tools to fight fires and save lives. And although we take them for granted because you never think you will ever need their assistance, one day you will. And when you do, you'll be thankful that the Newport News Fire Department is there as they pride themselves in being there day or night, 365 days of the year. But surprisingly enough, they're responsible for much more than what goes on along dry land. Because the Newport News Fire Department definitely makes a splash in waters here in this city and all around Hampton Road with its very impressive Marine Incident Response Team, or MERT, a highly trained group of men and women who specialize in everything from search and rescue to fighting fires out on the water thanks to an arsenal of equipment, and in particular, Fireboat One, also known as the Carl Brashear, in honor of the late Master Chief Carl Brashear, who was the first African American to become a U.S. Navy diver, and through his tenacity, courage, and dedication to duty, was a true American hero, and a fitting name for this boat, as it continues to provide a valuable platform for a wide range of training that enables firefighters and their highly trained divers to hone their skills and prepare themselves for anything and everything that occurs out on the water. We are proud to feature the Marine Incident Response Team and take you aboard Fireboat One, the Carl Brashear, as the Newport News Fire Department continues to provide the most state-of-the-art equipment and, more importantly, the bravest men and women on the front lines, whether on land or on the water, to fight fires and save lives. Well, July has been another busy month, so let's take a look at what's been going on right here in the city of Newport News. When you're flying high, it's hard to come back down, but when you do, always set your hopes high and leave plenty of room for growth as the Newport News Williamsburg International Airport gets its Air Commerce Park moving in the right direction as the shovels are turned for a bright future ahead. Community pride and patriotism as one very special neighborhood serves up its own slice of Americana with plenty of kids, families, and next door neighbors as they come together to walk or ride in style along our very own stretch of Main Street, USA. And the heat is on, but no matter how hot it gets, the work must go on as we take you to some of the hottest spots around, where city crews from our public works department sweat it up a bit, all in an effort to maintain the many sidewalks and streets that we depend on each and every day. When you're hot, you're hot, especially when it comes to surviving the sweltering heat of summer, and when you have a job that has you practically working all day long on the hot streets of our fine city. Well, that is indeed all in a day's work for the hardworking employees of our public works department as we recently caught up with a few crews who were busy breaking a sweat and doing what they do best, tending to the many streets and sidewalks that we utilize daily throughout the city of Newport News. It's like work, working in the Sahara Desert. You don't get that much of a breeze when the humidity is uh, present and it could be right taxing on your body. You got the heat coming from the concrete. You got the heat coming from the asphalt. So you're catching all the way around. I could say like it's mind over matter, but you know, you got to use common sense out here in the heat, even in the cold. If you start feeling like you're getting too overheated, you need to get in a, a shady area or drink more liquid. 
and we stress that with all our employees. Don't try to overdo it. If you start feeling faint or start feeling bad, take a rest and let somebody know. We know that we still have a job to do and we're gonna do that job and even if it take a little longer because of the heat, this is not, nothing to play with for us this heat. You really got to be on your toes at all times as far as your body, what you're feeling, and what your next employee is think you feeling. So we, we, got, we got to be very vigilant of each other and everything that we are doing out here in this heat. Well, you know, sometimes it feels like it's about 110, so it's pretty hot out here. Oh, with this asphalt being about 280, hot. I mean, it's all I can say, hot. It get to a certain point where it's just hot. <laughs> where it's, it's like anything else, you know, the longer you do something, the, you know, the more you're able to uh, adjust or cope with it. Uh, so, I, you know, whether it be cold, heat, or whatever. But as far as heat concerned, you know, you, you know, you drink, take your breaks uh, when you feel yourself getting too overheated or whatever, because that, that definitely is possible dealing with this asphalt. What we do mainly is, uh, you know, potholes patching. The city is about 26 miles long, I believe, and uh, I'm pretty much done covered every inch of it in the 12 years and nine months I've been here. I love my job. I mean, just working with equipment, jackhammering stuff out, you know, I just love working with machines and stuff like that, making sure the asphalt is level with the road and everything like that. That's what I love. Yeah, we do main roads with arterials like J. Clyde or Jefferson or uh, Warwick or something like that, you know. We we'll usually have a crash truck behind us or something, you know. We do all the lanes, and I mean, traffic's just steady coming by. You just got to watch out, you know. You hear you do your job, and to make the roads safe for the citizens, you know, so they won't come and complain, and so you can get the job right and, you, and just get off the road and do it safely. Teamwork is key out here, you know, you got to, um, you know, I love the people that I work around and things like that. So, you know, you work as a group, work as a unit, get the job done in the best efficient way as you can. You know, even though it's hot out here, you know, I'm always coming in, love my job. I'm uh, one trader for the world. Uh, you know, I'm just out here doing my job and doing the best that I can. It seems as though it's all work and no play, but that couldn't be farther from the truth. Because with summer here, every day is play day. And as everyone looks for creative ways to cool off, you don't have to look too far. Thanks to our beautiful beaches and playful pools that are an asset to this city, and best of all, free. Yes, this is Huntington Park Beach. It's a small local beach here in Newport News, um, run by the city of Newport News. So we are um, lifeguards in several areas. We um, try to keep the area safe, try to um, make sure everyone's taken care of out here and want to have everybody have a good time. Yeah, we are small, but um, it's local, so we don't have to make go over the, across the tunnels all the time. But yeah, we have the boat dock right over here. We've got a concession stand, and we have people come over all the time, just um, having big groups um, come out and play, and a lot of kids, a lot of adults coming out, and um, good time. I love going to the beach. In the water, it's cold, and, it, and when you get out, you get in the sand, the water, um, the sand is very, very hot. First time here. I love it. I'll probably come back every day. Pack a cooler and come on down. It's really exciting, um, actually. You would think that lifeguarding at such a small beach wouldn't be as fun as something like Virginia Beach or other beaches in the area, but it actually, there's never a dull moment here. You, a lot of people don't know this is down here, and it's, it's small, but it's, I mean, clearly there's a lot of space because people spread out and have fun, and I just, I really enjoy it. It's a nice place to work. When we start up Memorial Day weekend all the way through Labor Day weekend is when we go into our outdoor pool operations. We're located here today actually at Magruder Swimming Pool, which is one of our outdoor facilities that we operate open during the week and on the weekends. Uh, a fun environment for kids to come and enjoy. We want them to come out there, especially during the summertime when it's really hot, to have a nice place to come enjoy themselves and cool off. 
it offers a, a more activity for the possibly older individual with a deep end where they can play games. Um, we also will have lap lanes in the middle of the pool where we're encouraging anybody that wants to come out and swim laps to be able to take advantage of that. Anytime we can progress someone's swimming ability is beneficial. So that's a unique amenity of this facility. We've been coming here for over 10 years. I just love to swim. I love the water, I love to swim, I love the deep water. Um, and plus I get a chance to hang out with my brothers and my nephews and stuff. In 2007, we opened up Doris Miller Swimming Pool, which is a really unique facility. It's almost somewhat of a mini water park with uh, spray features and a splash pad. <laughs> Offers a zero entry depth, and uh, it only goes to five feet of depth there, which is really a, a good environment for families with younger kids to be able to offer them a, a fun activity. Again, being able to have variety is very nice here in the city of Newport News to have two different style pools that are located down here for people to enjoy. I think community pools are very important. I think that they might be dying, and this hopefully will be a way to get people to realize how important they are to the community. One of the city initiatives is being able to work with the neighborhood pools within the city of Newport News to offer more opportunities for local residents to go to pools. So we do have some facilities that have joined in, and they'll be operating from June 23rd through September 1st. It's on Wednesdays of each week from 12 p.m. to 8 p.m. that they're able to come to the facility and utilize it. Again, they just have to show proof of residency within the City of Newport News and follow all the rules and policies of that facility. The, the four pools that that opportunity is available, there's Village Green Recreational, there's Windwood Pool, there is also Windsor Great Park, and also the Boys and Girls Club located up on Hampton Avenue have joined in on this uh, initiative for this summer. It's a great free way to enjoy um, parts of your city that you might not have seen before to cool off, meet some new people, and visit maybe some neighborhoods that you've never been to. Oh, I think it's great because uh, joining a pool costs a lot of money for some people and just to even be able to go one day a week for an activity to do with the kids and it's refreshing when it's 100 degrees outside. <laughs> Whether you go to a beach, a community pool, a city pool, it's important to come out and enjoy your city and take advantage of the cool places to hang out. When you're flying high, it's sometimes hard to come back down, especially when you're in the business of taking people here, there, and everywhere. And just when you thought it couldn't get any better, the fastest growing, most successful airport in the nation is about to grow even more. As the Newport News Williamsburg International Airport's Air Commerce Park recently took off in the right direction, thanks to the Orion Air Group, who recently broke ground on a brand new $4 million office and hangar complex that will help provide a full range of value-added services for government and commercial clients all around the world. This tent was designed to keep you cool and keep the sun off your head and keeping the rain off your head today. This project is significant because Orion Air Group's groundbreaking marks the first aviation-related business to establish itself in Air Commerce Park in 10 years. Orion's facility helps to set the vision for what the Peninsula Airport Commission hopes to be the beginning of a thriving industrial park here at the airport. The Peninsula Airport Commission, the state of Virginia, and Orion announced plans for this new facility in May of this year. And I'm proud to say it was a successful collaborative effort. The City of Newport News EDA Department, with its leadership under Florence Kingston and others, the Virginia Economic Development Partnership, and the Hampton Roads Economic Development Alliance made this a reality, and we all worked together on it, and that's what, that's what we're most proud of. Obviously, this is a very uh, proud moment for us, uh, for the company and myself. You know, with, all the, uh, with all the local talent that's here, uh, it's a good place for us, it's a good place to grow the company and hopefully this is only the first phase of what uh, will eventually be, you know, more, more of your 30 acres work we can, uh, we can take care of. And this project is significant because it enables us to retain in Virginia the 57 jobs that Orion already has and create 51 new jobs in this facility here in Newport News. Each of these jobs, by the way, will carry an average salary of $81,000, which is impressive. And this new operation will enable Orion to continue to grow its business, and we're expecting many great things of them 
for many years to come here in Newport News and in Virginia. We are very, very proud to welcome you, Orion Air Group, and wish you every success in the future. Thank you and God bless you. Sometimes you have to fight fire with fire, but it sure doesn't hurt to have plenty of water on hand to help in the cause. Well, that's exactly what our brave men and women of the Newport News Fire Department do each and every day, as they're well equipped and properly trained to battle blazes and save lives, whether on land and yes, right here on the water. As we introduce you to the Marine Incident Response Team that is headquartered at station number one in downtown Newport News. The uh, MERT team is the oldest if not one of the oldest uh, components of the specialty teams in the fire department. And of course it was developed because of marine incidents out here and not having any response on the water. And it's a necessary component to be able to respond to marine incidents, you know, to mitigate anything from shipboard fires right on up to small pleasure boats. So it's a wide variety of, of responses. We have a lot of different apparatus here. This is the Dive One. This truck carries all our dive gear. In this compartment here, this is where we store the lift bags that we use for uh, floating vehicles or we can lift boats that have sunken with it. We have hose in here. We have some probes that we use for the dive lines. This case here has our underwater metal detector that the divers can use for uh, finding metal objects underwater. This is one of our uh, smaller Zodiacs. We have several of these um, stored that are available to be deployed throughout the city. This is used for uh, shallow water. Uh, it can be used out in the river. It's uh, actually a Navy SEAL boat. And we have these um, can be used and carried to inland water areas. We can't get the uh, big fireboat in or fireboat 21 in shore. Being housed here at Station One, it affords us an opportunity to reach the water quickly uh, it's very important that we have all the stuff that we do have and that we use and train on it. But when the rubber meets the road, it's, it's the boats that are on the water that are actually doing the, the bulk of the work. So it's nice to be able to head out from here and go down and, and take Fireboat 1 out and actually deal and, and take calls with a state-of-the-art boat that we do have. This is where we dive right in for any Merc calls out here on the waters, James River or out there in the Hampton Roads, wherever we're needed. And then today we are training out here different scenarios. If boaters out here and they need some assistance or help, uh, we're out here for them. We do a little bit of everything out here, which in our job it is unique. Um, yes, we are trained as lifeguards. That's our first step. And then after that, we get trained as boat operators and then some of us get trained as divers. Um, the divers that we do have are, are considered rescue divers, and it's a whole different aspect of diving as opposed to a recreational diver. Um, there's lots of other things, search patterns that we utilize um, to find something fairly quickly, or if it's large, you know, we have different search patterns in order to locate things, whether they're large or small. But uh, yeah, we do have to be aware, and there is a, definitely a lot of training that's involved in training divers and boat operators here in the city of Newport News. You always learn something different when you're out here on the water. We have a lot of our senior firefighters that have been divers for many, many years, and they always bring new ideas to the plate and new ways for us to think about for future uh, emergencies that we might run into. Um, of course, on the water, um, we also train with the Coast Guard sometimes and, you know, other jurisdictions, so there's, there's never a dull moment when it comes out here. One of our first initial things we'd like to do for people that are in the water, sometimes they're unable to help themselves. So in this particular case, you'll see today that we'll uh, have a swimmer, rescue swimmer, go in the water to uh, get the person that's in the water um, to help him get back on board the vessel. Watch yourself. And they can't help themselves. All right. Today we're out here doing some training, which is mostly what we do out here. I mean, there are calls that we do get out here that are legitimate, um, but most of the time, when we do come out here, it's for training purposes. We're trying to, you know, hone our skills to get better at what we do so that when the calls come in, we're prepared to uh, render assistance and help where, we, where needed. Well, I really don't know what's going on with it. We've been having problems and, you know, my buddy here said we should call 911. I, I mean, nobody's hurt, but yeah. the motor's not running. You, and... got, a, you got an anchor? Maybe their anchor broke uh, off. Anchor broke Perhaps their there. motor just uh, won't start. It's just clicking right. over and it just needs a little jump. We'd be more than happy to provide them, you know, a little jump start and get them on their way and tell them that, you know, they, what, what they need to do to get their boat operating safely. Yes, sir. You got sea tow coming out to you. They'll be more than happy to tow you in. All right. 
we try to practice and train as much as we can on top of our regular firefighter medic duties. Um, we're out here all the time and most people think, oh, I saw the fire boat out the other day. They're probably just out riding around. We're riding around, but we also have a purpose while we're outside riding around. It's not just to go joy riding and to burn the city's fuel. Uh, there's always a purpose every time we go out, whether it's on a call or we're training. The equipment we have on this boat here is kind of unique. We have a fire pump. We do have a monitor up top here. We have two engines. One engine is dedicated to the fire pump when we are pumping water for this monitor here, or the two in the uh, back. Um, that's capable of putting out 2,500 GPMs, and you think but that's a number, but it's uh, actually quite a bit of water that we can put out fires, boat fires in particular, fairly quickly. We can even utilize it if it's close to shore to help put out a structure fire that's close to shore, like a house on the water or something. <laughs> Again, we've had this vessel now for about three years. It served us well and it will continue to serve us well in the future. It, it provides ample resource out here on the water and it, it is a proud symbol of Newport News. What better way to spend the day with hundreds of kids by simply going out with plenty of rods and reels and casting them out in the hopes of hooking the big one. But it doesn't matter if they catch anything or not. It's the experience of fishing that will indeed last them a lifetime. <laughs> Thanks to the 15th annual Children's Fishing Clinic that was recently held on the beautiful James River Fishing Pier. I've got a committee that for the lion's share, I got 90% of the same people that started with me 15 years ago. Very rewarding. I put the call out in January, are you still on, and have a couple of meetings, and this happens. A lot of phone calls, a lot of pleading, a lot of begging, a lot of borrowing, a lot of logistic, but it's fun. Well, we set out with a goal of teaching kids about the marine environment, teaching them how to fish, what is out here, an opportunity for recreation, something that they could get a uh, lifetime love of by being introduced to it at a young age with the proper guidance and instruction by very able-bodied anglers. Uh, we've all taken it upon ourselves, the uh, fishing community, the Peninsula Saltwater Sports Fishermen's Association, the CCA, which is Coastal Conservation Association, has a lot of volunteers. And, and as you see, I've got 75 or 100 peer volunteers every year coming out to sweat, uh, cut and squid, helping bait hooks and detangle lines in many cases. You gotta bring the line in a little bit until it gets a little tight. In addition to uh, the volunteers, we have about 20 different organizations that registered. 261 of our children were here. and. All the registrations are, of course, handled by the News Parks and Recreation Department. We have groups that are as small as six and as many as 50. Wide cross-section from all parts of town, including the military community, which is Fort Eustis. And uh, we've had some groups that are summer programs primarily that are aimed at keeping youth uh, with proper guidance and giving them a summer activity. And we have many of the same groups, but hopefully not the same children. That's our goal every single year. Show your fish off. Show your fish off. My first fish. <laughs> many times it's their first time. And the, the neatest part of all is when you see them catch their first fish. Now, depending on the tides, what some years it's better than others. But we give every opportunity we can. We put chum pots underneath the pier. Uh, try to use uh, as fine a bait as we can find and give them... Uh, everything but a diver hooking it up underneath. Every now and then you get a school of skate go through here and spool five or six of the kids and they think they got a whale on there. Oh, it's wonderful. And to see all these smiley faces and when they catch seaweed and a crab, they don't care. And they just love it, right? Yes, see, see, so this is all great, all great. We couldn't ask for anything better first time 15th time, it doesn't make any difference for these kids, but to see, it's all about the smile on their face. <laughs> it's as American as the good old red, white, and blue and delicious apple pie, and the perfect way to bring a community and this city together, as our very own stretch of Main Street USA in historic Hilton Village continued on with a very special tradition, with a parade like no other to help celebrate a very festive 4th of July weekend. Oh, I love it. I love seeing the participation of the children 
and the different organizations that take the time to come. And this morning we have a group from our, our church who's also marching, and it's just good time. Break it! Well, it stands for so much. It gives us a, a chance to reflect and realize what freedoms we have, to be, be able to come here and not worry about being something terrible happening to you. And uh, I give great honor to our veterans and the ones who are actively participating in the, in the war. And it's just a matter of respect, I think, for the fact that we are in a country that's free. This is Hometown Main Street USA Parade that's been going on for many decades. Uh, numerous generations have uh, been in the parade, been their kids, and now even some grandkids. So it's really a unique uh, parade, one of the oldest parades uh, on the peninsula. And uh, everybody has a great time, as you can see. I mean, it's just a wonderful family, kid-friendly event. Uh, this is great. It's great for a great day, great day to celebrate America. It's great to see as many people out, beautiful weather, and just uh, enjoy my first, uh, I guess, official event. Hi! We feel like this is every town USA, and we're here to celebrate the founding of our, of our founding fathers and our nation, and it's great to be able to get out here and enjoy it with our neighbors, our fellow Americans, and, and have uh, our leaders down here to celebrate it with us as well. I like to see everyone just come in and join. It's really fun. Oh, it's wonderful to be a part of it. Uh, the heritage and the history behind it and the, the community spirit that we have here in Hilton Village is just wonderful. I think that's what Independence Day is all about, uh, getting together as a community and, and shining as a neighborhood. It's, it's beautiful to see it. And hopefully this is something that can last for many, many more years to come. July 4th just wouldn't be July 4th without spending the evening with plenty of patriotic people, listening to good music, and setting your eyes to the sky for some spectacular fireworks over the James River. We are here at Victory Landing Park, which is a beautiful waterfront park in downtown Newport News. And we are here because, of course, it is the 4th of July. And if it's the 4th of July, it's time for the Newport News 4th of July Stars in the Sky. Happy birthday, USA. People come with their whole families. We have food vendors selling food. Some people bring their picnic lunches and dinners. And you're welcome to do that here for our 4th of July event. We have free children's activities, which is great. Uh, the big slides and the moon bounce type of activities, it's great because sometimes you have to pay for that, but for the 4th of July, we're celebrating our freedom, so at least we have free activities for the children. Okay. <laughs> Everybody says, wow, this is just a great place to come and bring the family. It's a family-oriented event. You know, a lot of people don't know Victory Landing Park's down here. It's near the Victory Arch. and. You can discover a little new piece of Newport News by coming down here on the 4th of July. Well, I just like the fireworks, and I like it's just the atmosphere is very nice. And, you know, Newport News Recreation Park do a great job every year. Everybody wants to come together, and everybody wants to see fireworks. You know, Newport News, we're very proud that we have been able to continue to present this event, the city of Newport News. We've had budget cuts, and everybody is watching all our expenses. But you know, we really feel this is worth it. You know, families want this. The visitors coming to Newport News want this. And we're very proud to present this for Hampton Roads. Well, that's about all the time we have for you this month. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of Newport News in Review, as we've helped to showcase the Newport News Fire Department's Marine Incident Response Team, right here aboard Fireboat One, the Carl Brashear. And as always, on behalf of everyone here at Newport News TV, whether you're watching us on TV or online at NNGov.com, Facebook, or YouTube, thanks for watching, and we'll see you here real soon 
for the August edition of Newport News Interview right here on Newport News Television.